this out with a new form. We're just going to do a blank form. It's going to do a very basic form. Uh, we're going to call this one test form one. We'll ask some very basic questions, although you can ask any questions that you would normally ask on a form. I'm just going to do name and I'm going to do email. And that's all I'm going to do on this form. I'm going to come over to responses, go ahead and create my spreadsheet. Test form one responses. Remember, you can call this anything you want. You can add it to an existing spreadsheet if you'd like. I'm just going to go ahead and create that. So notice we have our timestamp, our name, and our email. And this could have had any number of other entries that you would have wished to have had it for. So while I'm here, I'm also going to come in and create a new Google Doc. And this is going to be my email template. And test form one email template. That way it's really clear. And I'm going to put just going to put a basic sentence in here that says something along the lines of dear name. Thank you for your response. Here is your code for the next lesson. Sincerely, Tammy Neal. And then I'm going to put right down here, code. Now, I want you to notice that this category is currently not anywhere in my spreadsheet response and it's also not anywhere on my short form. So this particular code is the one we're going to add in and use our query to merge it with the database from the form. But we needed it in our template because we're going to use this as our autocrat uh, template for mailing out. So we've got that done and notice everything is in my little forms query and autocrat folder and I'm going to go over here and I'm because of you know yes we can send all of our responses to one folder but I like to uh, s put all of those things in a special place so emailed forms and I always create a folder so I can keep everything nice and neat that's just me so once we've got our form we're now going to be working in our response uh, sheet. So we're going to add another sheet to this. We're going to name this anything we want to name it. So I'm going to come down here and rename this to query sheet, just so that I can keep track of things. And in my very first column, I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a query equals Q. E-R-Y shows up right there. And then I'm going to link my data from the first response. So I'm going to link my data. And I'm just going to take a few rows. It doesn't really matter at this point. I just need the, the list of all of my data. Had this been further out, I would have captured all of the data in my specific form. I'm going to come back over to my query sheet. And I'm going to close out with the following parentheses my form. So notice that my form is actually right here. And as people fill out the form response, it'll show up right here. So I'm going to take this over to another screen so that we can watch the form response fill in. Just some very basic rough information. And typically, as you submit these responses and get these responses from other people, um, what would happen was that if I wanted to put my code in here, and notice this is on my form response sheet, 
if I had entered my codes, whatever my codes were, could be an assignment, whatever. As I submit another response, I'm just gonna go in here and put in another code or two. But I'm gonna come back over to my form and I'm going to put in another, one more response. George. When you do this, you'll notice that George gets inserted. It doesn't get added to, it gets inserted. And so therefore the codes get skipped. So it actually gets overwritten the code that was originally there. So this is why just working from the form response sheet won't work because it actually overwrites the data that you may have previously put there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this code column and I'm gonna come over here to the query sheet and notice in my query sheet, it is updating directly from the form information. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put my codes. Now remember, this needs to be the same format as the code that I used in my template. So putting some codes in here, just some for right now, I'm just using some random numbers. And I'm gonna come back to my form for just a second. And I'm gonna add one more. So that you can see this is not overwriting it in the query sheet. So there's Henry, it did not overwrite it. Here's Henry in our other form, in our form responses. So what, a, what the query does is just copies the data from one sheet into the other. But what we're going to do, here's where we're gonna make our special change. We're gonna come up here, notice that this says from A1 to C9. So it would take from A1 all the way to C9. So as soon as that 10th person came in, that query would not be copied over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to make a wild guess as to how many people are gonna be using this particular survey, this particular form. If you're in a classroom, it might be a number of people who are taking the quiz or you know collecting the data. So this only works when you have some idea of how many people are gonna be using your form. So I'm just going to take a stab and I'm just gonna say 50 which means that this will update from column 1A all the way down to 50C on my form response. So that I'm gonna have plenty of space in this particular example. And this means that I could add in up to 49 other codes if I wanted to. So at this point, I'm going to include, I'm going to use my query sheet for Autocrat. And we're going to go ahead and launch Autocrat. And we're going to walk through adding Autocrat in. And this is why you want to run Autocrat from the query sheet and not from the form responses. Because now we have the codes. I could have come in here and entered three or four more lines of data, whatever I wanted to at this point. I could have done that with before I opened up my Autocrat. Okay, so we have no merge job set up, so we're going to create a new job. We're going to call this test form one, Oop. test form one merge. I'm going to go next, and I'm going to choose my template. Remember, this is the test form one email template that we created. There it is. Nope, nope, nope. Test form one response. Test form one email template. There we go. It's going to select that. There we go. Click next. And we don't want to use form response sheet one. We want to use the query sheet. So we're going to come right here and change this to query sheet. 
But notice, I want you to notice that before I choose this, that it doesn't see code from my template in form response one. So Autocrat already knows this is not, because of this little tag right here, that's what it means, that this is not um, found in form response one. But it's going to look at query sheet, because we told it to use query sheet for our Autocrat. So it's loading, and notice that that tag is now gone. Everything is mapped accordingly. And this is where you would map them. If you had named them something different, you would map them here. We're going to go next. We're going to save these files as form one merge name. I'm going to save this as a Google document. I'm going to do next. And I'm going to choose my destination folder. Remember, I made that, that other folder in my we're going to use emailed forms. We're going to choose next. I'm not worried about a dynamic reference at this point. Um, my condition, I want this to run every time. Timestamp. So every time this column isn't empty, I want this to run. Next. Um, share the doc, yes. Share it as an editable doc. I don't worry about them. I'm going to send this from a non, from a generic no reply because I don't want anybody to reply. Here is, here is your code as my subject. Your name. Here is the shared Google Doc with your code. Sign it. Next. Run on form trigger. Yep, I'm going to create this trigger so that every time the form runs, this autocrat is created. So the code is going to go automatically every time the form is created. If you want to run it on a trigger as well to make sure that everything gets backed up and ran, you can do that, but it's not necessary in this particular example. Whoop, next. We're going to save this. Oh, email recipient is missing. Oh, I need to so two email. Here's your code, your names. Notice that it caught that. I'm going to go next and I'm going to save this. And unless I manually run, which is right there, that's manually run. This is going to wait, and this has told me the form is triggered to set, and I have an email to share. Here's information if I want to preview my job or if I want to delete this particular merge, I can do that. So I'm going to close this, and I'm going to come back over to my test form, and I'm going to run one more put my email in there, submit that. And I'm going to come back over here and watch this happen. So here comes Kevin. Now, in the background, my autocrat is starting to work. It's going to take a little while for all of that to run. So we're going to bear with it for just a minute. Here it goes. It's starting to create and it's starting to merge. And each one of these will get an email with this particular code on it. So here they go. Email sent. And we know it's working because over here in our emailed forms folder, it is creating the emailed forms. And here comes our last one. And it's doing all of its lovely work in the background. And it's going to stop because our timestamp is empty. So this is where it stops. So here's all that information. Here's the merge document. Here's the link to the merge document. Here's the data that tells us whether it's been successful or not. So I hope that that's been helpful. Uh, notice that we can add these things just by using this particular query. And if we find that this is, form is filling up, we can always go back and change that specific number right there to add more to our 
um, to our list if we need to. But yes, the query, this is our magic bullet right here. So I hope that's been helpful. Thank you.